So y'all know it's not a myth. Oh, that's cool. It's alive! What's going on, guys? Welcome to another video. Let the smoke clear a little bit. This car's broken again. I don't know what's wrong right now. I really don't. It just won't start. Just like I said in the other video, am I taking this car to mid pond? Well, I didn't. Cause I just put that video up and obviously that car went there and it also didn't start the morning of mid pond. So if, even if I wanted to take it to mid pond, it wouldn't have made it. So, um, right now it just won't start. I haven't tried anything yet. I just tried to start it. Didn't start. I walked away. I said, all right, we'll figure it out later. Um, before that, I even had another problem that I kind of touched on with the, uh, massive cooling leak on, uh, the metal rod that goes into the block past black fix that problem so i'm gonna let past black tell you about it but um it's it's been really annoying messing with this car over and over and over again but uh i'm uh anyways he, he waiting let, let him let him talk to you real quick thank you i thought he'd never shut up um yes i'm in here under the intake manifold because there is a leak so yes under the intake manifold there is a metal coolant pipe that uh runs along the block one hose goes to the expansion tank one hose goes to the heater valve this goes back into the head and um yeah it's um you can just slid in there and it's supposed to have two o-rings and this has one o-ring and some rtv so uh that clearly did not hold for very long so that's that's got to be addressed <laughs> So I don't know why it has RTV. I mean, at this point, I just got the whole new pipe. You see the pipe has two O-rings. That's what it's supposed to have, not RTV. So we're gonna swap out this whole pipe and who knows, that pipe is probably cracked. Maybe that's why you use RTV. I don't know, but we're gonna fix it the right way and hopefully never have this problem again. I also noticed while I'm under here, all my fuel lines have zip ties on them. <laughs> supposed to have hose clamps so um that's not gonna fly either i'm gonna have to throw some actual hose clamps on there because i don't i mean the, the zip tie slides so it's obviously not very tight on there so i probably would have had a fuel leak later on anyway so i would have been under here regardless Okay, the intake manifold is still off, but everything's put back together. I'm just waiting for a pressure tester. It's supposed to be here a few days ago, but it's kind of delayed. So hopefully it shows up tomorrow and I can test the pressure, make sure everything's good before I put this intake manifold back on. I don't, I don't want to keep taking it on and off. It's a pain in the ass. Also changed all the uh, fuel line zip ties for actual hose clamps. And that was like a fire waiting to happen. Like imagine the car's up to temp 200 degrees, 210 degrees. And all of a sudden, boom, your fuel line just explodes and shoots that all in the engine block with oil. And that, that could have been bad. So should be good now. I said, find new stuff every day on this car. But eventually, I'm, I'm going to fix everything. So <laughs> I want to say I think that's it for it. But I said that the last three times. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens next. <laughs> and that leads us to where we are today. Um, like I said, it just... I don't know what happened. It just won't start. Um, try to start it. It'd be funny if it starts right now on camera. But I'm leaning towards fuel pump because I don't know. It just that that's as far as I get. It cranks. And every once in a while, it'll sputter. So I feel like some type of fuel is going in there, but not enough. So I'm going to check fuel pump. I know I did unplug my idle control valve because it was acting up, but um, and I've been running it without an idle control valve. So it runs without it. I doubt that's the issue. I don't even think that would have a problem with it starting. I'll plug it back up just in case, but uh, it really shouldn't matter. I got to pop the hood. This is my 
my hood popper right here. If you guys ever get in the jam and your hood release cable breaks, you know, you gotta, your cable's right here, guys. I don't know if you can see it with my finger in the way. So you just take a little hook, slide your corner light out. It's possible to slide your corner light out, pull, and your hood is popped. So what is going on with you today? I'm gonna reach under there, one-handed and blind, and hook my uh, sensor back up to my auto control valve. And like I said, I really don't think that matters, but I'll try it. All right, just got that plug back in. Like I said, it really shouldn't matter. Like, literally shouldn't matter, but just in case. Didn't think so. Um, guess I'll check the fuel pump fuse. Like I said, I'm leaning towards fuel pump fuse 18. Is not blown. Anything goes wrong with the fuel pump, that's usually where it starts. See how it wants to start? I feel like it's getting fueled, just not enough. So I'm gonna check back seats now. So, as you saw on the video, it was pretty ghetto rigged with the uh, zip ties. I have drove it since I fixed that. And I mean, it drove pretty hard, so I, I, I'm I, literally at a loss of words right now. It's about the to rain, too, so hopefully it doesn't rain on my video. I'm surprised it actually has hose clamps. <laughs> I was really expecting some zip ties, but I guess this was chassis, so he swapped the motor, didn't swap the chassis, so I guess that's why. Check these connections. You say we're just going to a checklist here. I also don't hear anything when I turn on the ignition. So I wonder if the fuel pump just doesn't work. I know E36 fuel pumps aren't really that loud stock, so kind of hard to tell sometimes. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna take this fuel pump out, see if there's anything physically wrong with it. Uh, if I don't see anything crazy, then I'm gonna take uh, Ebony's fuel pump out because she's also OBD1 with a white cap. It's supposed to be white, looks yellow. You cannot use a blue cap. Blue cap is OBD2. They have different lines and you'll leak. So uh, let's do that and see if I'll start. Now remove this thing. A lot of people say, uh, a lot of people. A lot of people have these uh, wrenches or specialty tools. Man, you don't need that shit. Like a flathead and a hammer. And beat it around a circle. Done. There's your fuel pump. All the hoses seem fine. I don't see any weird wiring. That seems fine. It looks fine. I don't physically see anything wrong with it. I'm just gonna swap it with Ebony's and maybe this car will start. And if it does, this will be a quick and actually easy video. Maybe I'll go do burnout and celebration. I don't know. Oh. Let's try. And same process, same car. A little harder in a coupe though. I do see the advantage of sedans right now because I'm leaning over. A little uncomfortable right now. There you go. Oh. 
Now, removing this fuel pump from Ebony isn't a bad thing since she needs a fuel pump anyways to support the turbo. This stock fuel pump won't do anything with some 60 pound injectors and especially trying to run E85. So, it would have to come out anyways. I still need the holster, which I can use the other one if the pump is just bad. Yeah, just swap out the pump with a better pump. Haven't decided what pump yet. 340 or 450, 485. I haven't decided yet. I haven't got that far. But uh, I'm going to plug it in and turn the ignition on and see if I can at least hear the pump fire on. Because I didn't even check that last time. All right, so fuel pump is in place. Hoses are on. Like I said, they're not tight. I'm not going anywhere because this still needs to go over it. And that goes under the hoses to clamp it down. But it should at least start like that. And we'll go from there. So hopefully, I can start. I don't know why that starter keeps doing that too. Starter sounds weird too, it keeps clicking like that. Come on. I just took the hoses off. I'm gonna turn the ignition on just to see if it's even pumping. Cause if it is pumping, then I got fuel. But as far as everything else, let's see. I'm not getting any fuel. It should be squirted out somewhere. Oh shit, Never mind. it works, it works, it works. Okay, I'm getting fuel. <laughs> shit, I just pissed all over my car. So I'm getting fuel. At least I think it's going all the way through. I can check fuel filter. I have to lift the car up for that, but... Is it getting all the way to the rail is the question. I don't think there's any leaks anywhere, so... It's a good question. I don't see any major fuel leaks. Um, usually when the fuel filter is bad, though, usually it, it cuts off while you're driving. You know, it gets clogged. And then after it sits, it unclogs over time and then to start up but this time it just sat overnight and then it didn't start up the next day so i don't think it's fuel filter that doesn't sound like fuel filter but i don't know what else it could be so since i know pump works i'm gonna put everything back the way it's supposed to and uh yeah that's all i got okay fuel pump is back in because that is not the problem so I'm hoping it was because that would be an easy fix, but let's go tackle a fuel rail. All right, so this is the feed line. I'm going to take this feed line off and let it spray, if it will spray. And um, that way I can see if there's actually fuel going to the rails or not. I just take the line off and it was dripping like crazy. So there definitely was fuel in the fuel rail. So, But I'm going to do it just in case, but... That, I don't think that's it either. All right, guys, I need y'all to check this line for me. I'm, I'm going to start it. I'm running the car real quick. Start it. Let me know if some fuel comes out of there. Okay, that was the weirdest shit ever. It started. What the fuck? You guys saw that, right? The, the fuel line was off. I looked back in the footage. Fuel did come out. And it started for a second without the fuel. <laughs> um, that didn't make sense. I'm going to plug it up. And maybe it had air in the system. I don't know. That's weird. Why did it start? Okay, the line is back on. Let's try to start it again. Will it start with the line on? Since it started without it somehow. Um, please. It wants to. In for a second. That's so weird. So that's weird. It started when I pulled the fuel line off until it ran out of gas in the fuel rail. Put the fuel line back onto the fuel rail, 
now it won't start. So fuel rail, fuel line shoots fuel, so it's not fuel filter, it's not fuel pump. It's getting fuel. It started, idled for a quick second, so it's not spark. I don't know what's going on. Starting to rain pretty heavy now, and I don't want this camera getting wet, so I might have to close everything up and come back out here later. But I am, I'm kind of stumped. That's so weird. I'm gonna try to start it one more time. Maybe I'll get lucky. I don't know what's going on. You see, it wants to start. Come on, it's about to start, it's about to start. It's about to start. Here it go, here it go. Come on, baby. See how it's idling shitty? Watch, I'm gonna go unplug the idle control valve and watch the idle get regular again. I swear, it's so weird. All right, idle control valve is unplugged. And now it's running. What the hell just happened? So I fixed it and I didn't do anything. All right.
it's not as loud as annoying so thank you guys for that because it actually made me look back at it and try it again and now we're at current times just fixed the coolant leak that was the metal pipe for the o-rings and for some reason fuel just wasn't working i still don't know what happened there but it's working now so uh yeah this car has been a headache so eventually it will actually go to a drift event i just need it to run for longer than two days that's all i ask i got extra wheels i don't have tires yet which you know that won't be hard to find like go to global I guess it's gonna do it for this video um i didn't know what to expect like i said it just didn't start i didn't know what it was my idea was fuel pump and that's what the first thing i tackled and i don't i don't know what happened it just all of a sudden it just started working and that wasn't the first time i tried to start it like i tried to start it that morning of mid pond i was just gonna drive this car to josh and sunny's house and it just didn't and then i came home from that weekend tried to start it it didn't and then i went to work and then i came home tried to start it it didn't so i tried to start it multiple times multiple days i don't know what happened i really have no idea what happened i took you guys with me it just randomly started working let's see if it'll start now 
So I have no idea what happened. So um, I guess that's it for that video. I didn't know it was going to be like some sensor. I didn't know it was going to be spark plugs. I didn't know what was going to happen. ECU, I had no idea. So I'm glad it works. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see this thing at a drift event. Deuces.